I'm Ryan Middleton, software lead for Delphi Labs at Silicon Valley, and I'm going to be showing you a simulation of our automated driving in our facility in Mountain View, California. Uh, so we actually recorded these drives in our self-driving cars, and what you'll see is a playback of exactly what happened and how the vehicle operates. So we're going to show something that happens in your everyday life and will certainly happen as we get towards the future of automated driving, which is your commute home. Uh, so we're going to start at the Delphi office. We've enabled the capability to do a valet pickup at Delphi Labs. Uh, so you'll see our director, John, here. He's going to request a pickup on our Delphi Connect app, which is a consumer app we have currently. And we've added a, a customized version which can do the pickup at our facility. So the car pulls up and uh, simply allows John to get in. Please scan your finger. The reason we show this scenario is to talk about security as part of automated driving. Uh, so you don't want little Johnny, uh, you know, getting in and just requesting a ride to uh, grandma's house. Uh, so in this case, uh, we actually, <clears throat> excuse me, so in this case, we actually uh, want to make sure that the driver is authorized to drive the vehicle. So another scenario that we show is getting onto the highway. So this is the first leg of our trip systems today that are able to do some automated features on the highway uh, basically are a combination of adaptive cruise control and lane keeping which means they stay behind the car in front of you and they keep uh, the stay in the same lane uh, so in this case you're going to see that our vehicle in automated highway mode is able to perform lane changes right here it's going to do an automatic lane change uh, because uh, it knows we're in an exit only lane as we come on the highway and it doesn't want to exit so changing lanes. There's an audible notification to the driver that is changing lanes. And of course uh, the driver can also initiate a lane change so in this case um, they've already I think when we recorded this hit the turn signal indicator but the car is waiting for the traffic to clear before it changes the lane. Changing lanes. And so that's sort of the next step, the next thing in automated driving is going to be still only highway driving, but being able to have a little bit more control over how the car operates on the highway. So now we'll talk about another scenario that's very important in the near future of automated driving, which is returning control to the driver. Our car is capable of doing full automated driving from point A to point B. Uh, but some production systems to start are only going to be able to You're do highway. You're in one and a half miles. Prepare to take control. Uh, so in this case, uh, we assume that we can only do highway driving. So the car is requesting that the driver take control before we reach the exit in about one mile here. In this case, in the scenario we recorded, the driver did not take control. So you'll see the full progression of Prepare alerts. Prepare to take control. A key point here is we will never assume that the driver is already taken control or just hand it back. Um, we actually need the driver to do three things. Have their eyes ahead for which we use our driver camera system which is installed on the car here. Uh, we want to make sure their hands are on the wheel which we can sense Delphi through the steering drive wheel. Drive ends in half a mile. Take control. And we also want uh, them to push a button to take control. Right now you're hearing and feeling uh, the seats shaking in the car because you know the driver is asleep or something we want to make sure that they're paying attention if there's passengers we want them to yell at the driver as well to take say please control take, now. take control now right of course this is sort of a worst case uh, in this case the driver is either passed out or dead and you know hopefully not uh, but performing safe stop the vehicle has to be capable of actually having a safe uh, you know graceful re uh, recovery and uh, doing a safe stop uh, so in this case we find a spot on the shoulder that's large enough to pull over and, and we'll do so okay so uh, one additional scenario that we'll show is a more urban scenario where we'll encounter some bicycles and some pedestrians so as we exit the highway here, we're going to come uh, through the light to a short merge. There's actually a car in our blind spot, and our display here is showing that. Uh, so uh, the car can actually see uh, the obstacle in our blind spot before it comes into view of the driver, which is useful. And we call this our confidence display. So as the car comes in, uh, we're going to have to back off a little bit 
and this is the kind of maneuver that uh, you sort of feel as the passenger in a car. Uh, so we actually want uh, the driver, if they're distracted, to be able to glance down and have confidence that the car has it under control. So that's what would happen in this case. Uh, we're also capable of detecting pedestrians, so we're coming to a crosswalk here and we use our camera system to determine this is a pedestrian and make a safe stop. And as we continue, uh, one of the big questions around automation in general today is how to make the system behave more like a human and less like a robot. Uh, so uh, we'll show how we, we try to do that here. Uh, we, as we come up on a bicyclist, again, we detect and classify it as a pedestrian, or I'm sorry, as a bicyclist. And we bias, or as we say, or move a little bit to the side of the lane to give more space. We do the same thing, for example, when you pass a large truck in the next lane. And so uh, these are sort of comfort features. Uh, we're trying to instill confidence and comfort in both the driver of the car and other drivers uh, that the car knows what it's doing and that it's behaving in a reasonable way.